Hey everyone, this is Mukesh Utwani once again from learn-innovation.com. Today in this video, we are going to talk about how we can debug your Python program in PyCharm. Debugging is one of the most important part for any other programming language. So whether you're working with Python, Java, C Sharp, doesn't matter, you should know the debugging. Because debugging will help you to debug your program easily and you will actually get to know what exactly is going wrong with your code, okay? So right now what we are doing, we are just writing one or two lines of code so we are able to see the output. But let's assume that you're working in a real time project and your program is failing now. Okay, let's say it is failing because of some exceptions. So how do you get to know that what is going wrong with my code or what is wrong with this statement? So you can actually debug your code with the help of debugger and you can easily rectify what is going wrong. Okay, so I will show you with few examples and don't worry once we move ahead, once we start working with complicated topics or I will say scenarios, again, I will be using this debugging multiple times. So don't worry, as of now, just understand the basic uh, principle of debugging, how to debug your programs, how to watch the variables. Okay, and once you move it, definitely we will be using this for multiple examples. Again, debugging in PyCharm is very easy. So what I will do, let me create a Python file first so that I can show you a basic debugging. So just go ahead and create a new Python file. And here I will say debug demo. Okay, let's create some variables. So I will say x equal to 10. Okay, and let's say y equal to 20. Again, I'm using a very basic example. Next example will include some more uh, different kind of data types. As of now, I'm taking both number as integers. And finally, I will say the sum and this sum includes, let's say x plus y. Makes sense. And now if I print sum, I should get the output. This is what we are doing so far, right? So the moment I say right click, run as debug demo and we are getting the output, perfect. Now let's say I want to see what is going on within this statement, I want to capture the internal state. So how can I do that? So in order to start debugging, you need to add a breakpoint. So using breakpoint, you can tell exactly at which statement to stop, okay? So it will stop at that particular statement, then you can debug your program. So in our case, what we can do, let me add the breakpoint at statement number one itself. So you can see I have these four statement one, two, three, four. In case these numbers are not coming for you, just right click here. Okay, and you can see this checkbox, right? So if I say uncheck, I don't get these options. So I, I would highly recommend in case if you don't have these line numbers, just right click and click on show line numbers. It will make your debugging very easy. In order to add the debug breakpoint, you just need to do a click once. Okay, and you can see this a red circle right this is a breakpoint so now when you execute your program it will stop here and then you can you know execute your program statement by statement so in order to debug you could just do the right click and say debug and the moment you execute and you can see your program stopped at this statement okay so yes you can see right now the spatial variables, the moment you open uh, this, you can see these are the spatial variables which is internally coming from Python. Right now, it's not showing the local variables that we created, okay? So don't worry, as of now, don't expand this. This is just for your information. In case if you want to know, these are the spatial variables get loaded the moment you run your program. Now, if I have to execute the next statement, you can see I have an option called step over, okay? I can just do the step over and you can see it will execute the current statement and it will move to the next. And you can see we got one value which is of integer type and value is 10. Can you see? So x is the variable name. It is a type of integer and value is 10. Same thing if I say step over. Now I got y as well which is again y is a variable type of integer value is 20. The moment I say sum you can see I got uh, some variable. Now again, value is 30 type of integer. The moment I is execute again, now it will execute this print. Okay, so you can just go to console and verify the output is 30. Now let's change the values and see how it gives a different output. So, okay, so in this case, if I say 20 dot, uh, let's say 15.5. Okay, and let's debug it once again so again i will say right click debug as and you can see now the debugger started again so let's execute i will say step over i got value as 10 type of integer let's execute the next statement 
Now you can see the value, right? Internally, it is telling you that it's a value kind of float. Value is 15.5 and the variable name is y. And now as we know, when we combine or when we do the addition of integer with float, we get the final value as float, right? So let me execute it once more. And you can say finally, we have variable as some type of float and the value is 25.5. So you can see now how internally we're able to see what kind of value it has and what the value is. Right now it's very straightforward because we are hard coding the values, right? But once you move ahead, definitely you will be getting these values from a different file or from a different function or from a different class itself. In that case, it will be very helpful because you will be able to see what kind of values we are getting from the different files or from the different sources and it will make your debugging task a little easy. As of now, hard coded values, but yeah, you will get these values from a different sources as well once we move it. As of now, just understand the basic principle of debugging. I hope it is clear now. Let me take one more example that will again make your task a little easy. So let me take some numbers. I will say num1 and I will be using now input. So input we already discussed, right? That it will take the input from the user. So let's say I will say, please enter number one. Okay. And I will be taking input from the user. Same thing I will be doing for num2 as well. So I will just copy and paste. I will just terminate the previous debugger and just say number two. Once we get the numbers, I will just say sum. Okay. And I will say num1 plus num2. And finally, I will be adding this value and I will say value is and finally I will combine with sum. Yeah, let's execute. I will just remove this and I will add the breakpoint at line number six and let's execute. Okay, so these are the variables and that is anyway showing because this statement got executed, right? We also executed print sum. So if you come back to console, you can see that we got the value. But now, the moment I come back here, it stopped here at num1. The moment I say step over or f8, right? You can come here and you can see it is asking, please enter your number one. I will say, let's say 90. Okay, so it is asking the next number. Okay, so we need to exactly do this step over again. Now it is giving, please enter number two, let's say 89. Yeah, so now these two statements got executed. So if I come back to debugger, can you see? I got num1. Okay, so we did a small mistake here, guys. We haven't given num2. Okay, so it was overriding the value. So let me do one thing. Let's uh, stop this debugger and execute it once again. Okay, so now it is asking, please enter number one. Let me do this. Yeah. So we come here and we say number any number, let's say 12. Now it is coming to the next statement. Again, I will say step over. It is asking, please enter number two, let's say five, six. And if I come back to debugger now, you can see we got num one, which is string now. Because here's a catch, because the moment you get uh, values from the input method, it will always return you string, right? So I have 12, which is string Then I have num2, which is again type of string. The moment I say string with string, it will do the concat operation, right? The moment I execute this, okay, execute once again. And can you see we got the value as one, two, five, six. Okay. So which is not even uh, what we expected. We thought it will add the numbers and will get the output, but because of this, integers oh sorry the string part it is just doing the concat operation now here comes the debugging part because the moment you start debugging you will understand that it's a string when we are combining two string we're getting one final string so what we can do we can just do now uh, type casting we will convert this string into integer and then we can do the final addition right so let me just show you once again uh, so in order to type cast what i will do i can type cast directly here or i can type cast in the next statement it's up to you so let me do one thing let me type cast here it will make little uh, task easy so i will say num1 again i will i can use the same variable because of dynamic typing right what i will say uh, convert this num1 into integer 
okay same thing i will do here i will say num2 and we want to convert num2 also in a in an integer so i will say num2 here so earlier it was string in the next statement i will be converting into integer same thing i will get num2 as a string i will be converting into integer now integer with integer i will get final integer and now it should also give me the final output but again as we know that we cannot add or we cannot concat string with integer so again we need to do a small casting here that we will do okay but let me execute till here at least so right click debug okay let me execute this step over come back to here let's say number is 67 execute once again okay and let's say 90 now you come back here and just go to debugger can you see now number one is already converted into integer so it says num1 now is 67 which is integer but if you just notice one more thing we are or we have not executed this statement right so num2 is still a string right now but the moment i execute this statement you will see num2 will change to integer type so let's execute and you can see the moment i execute this statement num2 got converted into integer now we have integer and integer the moment i say integer plus integer final value also i should get as integer so you got the output as integer 157 but the moment i try to do the concatenation you will see it says you can only concat string to string not integer so either i can directly do it here or i can execute here so what i will do some anyways it's coming as a string uh, integer what i will say convert into a string and then use it so this is how we can convert any value in string so num1 and num2 was coming as integer the moment i pass integer value within str it will convert into string and we will get the final output okay so what i will do i will just put a breakpoint at this statement i don't want to execute all the program so i will just stop this debugger delete all these logs not required just right click debug it is asking please enter your number i will say 90 67 and you can see now let's talk about this sum so sum is right now it is a form of integer right and we cannot convert or we cannot concat string with integer so right now i have not executed this statement but the moment i execute just notice this variable okay sum it converted into string now i can concat string with string the moment i execute this i can see i got the value as this so this is how debugging can help you i know this is a very basic example but once you move it same principle will be applicable for complicated programs as well and it will save a lot of time for you so i would highly recommend just try the same examples which i showed you or maybe you can take some previous example that we discussed in the for loop or in previous programs. It will help you to debug your programs easily. So maybe quickly I can show you one more example that will make your concepts little better. So I will quickly create a list which is L1 and let's say I have some numbers here. Okay. Now I want to just run a for loop and I just want to get these values. I will say for I can take any variable let's say x in l1 so it will pick one value from the list it will store into x and it will just iterate it so i just want to print these values fine so what if i want to debug and i just want to see how this for loop is working how these values are getting iterated i can add a debug point here at line number 17 and uh, let me just debug this Okay, it's still asking us the numbers. Okay, let's enter some numbers. Okay, so you can see now, right now, this x already we have taken. Okay, so it's already taking some value 10. Don't worry. The moment we execute this, now this x has one value, which is 2. So it's actually started 
taking 2 from this list assign into x now the moment I step over it is again going to the for loop and from this list it will pick 3 now and it will assign into x you can see value got updated next value should be 4 you can see value is 4 again it will go to list and this time value should be 5 and here we go at last it should take 90 and now we don't have any value in the list okay so the moment I execute one more time it will go back and check do we have any more value in the list if no it will come out of this for loop okay so just try this debug breakpoint multiple times with multiple examples and it will make your concept clear in case if you're new to this channel then don't forget to click on subscribe button like this video share with your friends and in case if you find any other issue related to python let me know in my comment section or you can just send me an email to my email which is mukesh otwani at the rate learn automation.com and i will see you in the next video have a nice day bye bye